What we're going to be going over here are debits and credits on our balance sheet and on our income statement. And really what we're going to do is just set up a template as a reference here when we're doing for doing our accounting problems. And why would we even need that? Well, uh, this is the case here. When you're getting into uh, accounting here, you probably haven't been exposed to any accounting problems before. And in comparison to uh, grade school and high school, you went through any number of math classes and you were exposed to from elementary math all up on up through maybe algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and maybe even into calculus here. So you've learned, we're exposed to a lot of uh, ideas, concepts, but they were concerned with the math world or that analytical part of the world. But now here you're entering into uh, trying to get in, going into a business school or you're getting into the business environment. And then when you're into that environment, there you're going to be dealing with accounting. And now you're getting into maybe your first accounting class and you're going to have to know what debits and credits are and the balance sheet, the income statement, and there's a whole lot of accounts that are concerned. So this is the problem you're going to have here. When the instructor gets up on the board, he's going to have some descriptions here uh, sitting on one. He's going to have some descriptions here and then he's going to have numbers here set off to uh, on after each of the description. And description is going to uh, uh, relate to some account of some sort. And there's going to be debits and bal uh, debits and credits for each of those accounts. So you'll have uh, some uh, off, off to the left here, you'll have some accounts with some numbers. And then offset a little bit more to the right, you're going to have other accounts with some numbers. And you're going to have to understand what those accounts do and where debits and credits fit in. And this is where our template can come in handy because you need a point of reference to uh, understand what's going on here. So debits versus credits, really we're talking about increases versus decreases in these various accounts that we're talking about. And these debits and credits must balance. Okay, so let's go and let's look at our template here. So I've got it laid out here uh, where I'm going to, uh, you would just take like an eight and a half, 11 piece of paper here and write down your, write down your different uh, sections here uh, uh, for this balance sheet, uh, for the, your debits and credits here on your balance sheet. So what you're going to have here, you're going to have a balance sheet accounts here and you're going that's going to be on the left side of your sheet here. And then moving over to the right side, you're going to have what they call the income statement account. So you would have, that would be your basic breakdown here, balance sheet, versus the income statement. And under your balance sheet, you're going to have some asset accounts here, liability accounts here, and then what they call stockholders equity or shareholders equity accounts over here. And we'll get into the details on those, not just looking at our debits and credits, increases and decreases. And then moving over to our income statement, we're going to have what they call net income. And that's showing over on, on the far right side here, those accounts. So moving all back over to our balance sheet here. And furthermore, you're going to have it really when you get into more advanced accounting courses, you're going to have under your assets here, you're going to have investing activities. And then under your liabilities and stockholders equity, you're going to have financing activities. Those are broken out here. And then moving over here to your net income here, you're going to be looking at operating activities here for the company. Okay, so let's move back to our asset account here. And, and really, what we'll get into this, the debits and credits to show it how you should be uh, putting them down here on your, on your template. So for your assets, you're really going to have current assets here and long-term assets. And they can be any numerous amount of accounts here. So what you would do for your debits and credits here, uh, what it really is is increases and decreases. And I'm showing it in what they call T account form here. So you've got uh, the right side or the left side here for our asset accounts is going to be a debit or an increase. The key thing is here an increase. Now, when we're and then moving over to the right side, we're going to have a credit here and that would be a decrease in our account. So whatever we're listing here as a debit, that whatever numbers we have for the period here, we're listing as a debit that would increase our assets. Any numbers here going into a credit here on the right side of our equation would be reducing our assets. But the one thing we want to look here, and we'll move, we'll just look at assets versus liabilities here. On the left side of all our accounts here, on the left side of all of our accounts, we call those debits. And on the right side, we call them credits. 
but it depends on which account we're working with. If we move from our assets over here to our liability accounts on that side of our accounting equation, that is assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity, uh, let's looking at current liabilities here. So under liabilities, you see debit is still on the uh, left side of the account here, or our, what we call our T account, but it is changed. The debit is now a reduction to our liabilities, whereas with the assets here, a debit was an in increase to our assets. So that's the difference. Just remember, debits are always on the left side, credits are always on the right side of these T accounts. So going on here with our liabilities, you can see a credit here would increase our liability. We have it as a plus amount here, opposed to our assets here where the credit was a minus uh, or decrease here in our assets. So you can see the difference here. When we're talking about one side of the equation or the other here, debit for our assets increased our assets, a debit here for our liabilities reduced our liabilities. And same for credits here. Credit here uh, reduced our assets, a credit here increased our liabilities. Okay, so let's just move down here to our assets again. And then long-term assets, they generally break it out between current assets here and long-term assets. And then let's move down here. Now, for all our different assets and liabilities, stockholders, equity, we got what they call contra asset accounts. So what a contra, in this case, a contra asset account does, what it does, it works in the opposite direction here of your asset accounts, either the current assets and long-term assets. Uh, for example here, if you had, let's just take a look at our long-term assets here. Say, for example, we had a debit amount here, uh, that would have been an increase in our long-term assets, but we have to reduce them. For whatever reduce, uh, reason, we have to credit or reduce our long-term assets. So now, many times here in accounting, you can't directly go in and reduce your asset account here. They do it through what they call the contra asset account. So what they do here, you can see that the, t the signs are changed here. So when we're talking about the contra accounts here, they work in opposite directions of your normal or your main accounts here. So for uh, taking the long-term assets here, you can see a debit here was an increase here on, on, on the left side of the uh, T account here, whereas moving down a contra asset here to debit here, is a reduction here. So they work in just the opposite direction. So uh, when you total them up, these contra assets here are gonna net out against your long-term or your other asset accounts, and you're gonna come up with a net amount between your debits and credits. Again here, looking at the credits here for a contra asset, the credit here increases your contra asset account here. In, a, in essence, what it does is it's reducing your long-term, in this case, your long-term asset account here. Credit here, you would add it in here, rather than going up here and just putting credit, crediting or reducing that account directly here, they go and they set up another uh, account as, as that reduces it directly here. So it just stays on this side of in your asset accounts here, it just stays in here. Your reductions here to, uh, through your contra accounts with your long-term assets just stay and sit right in here on, in your asset accounts. Nothing is being moved over into uh, your net income or any of these other liabilities. This is just a direct reduction to whatever account is. And that's how all the contract accounts work here. Okay, so let's move over to our liabilities here. Again, just look at our debits and credits. They're just reversed to what our asset account is. So uh, in this case, we take our liabilities, we look at current liabilities, long-term liabilities here. And just remember on the left-sided equation here, your debit is a negative. So uh, a reduction here to your liability. So when you set out your template, you may even take, for a quick reference, take in any minuses here so note them in red here, just put a big old minus here in red. So debit here matches up with a reduction to your liabilities as I'm showing it here as a negative. And then a credit is a plus. So you'd break out your liabilities between current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and then moving down here, you have those contra liabilities. Same as contra assets, only that they work in the opposite, in, same, they work in an opposite uh, direction to your liability account. So if you had, uh, debit here on your left side is a negative uh, and your contra liability debit here would be a positive amount and same for the credit. Credit in your regular uh, liabilities account here is a plus. 
on your contra liabilities as a credit minus. Okay, so then moving over to our stockholders' equity uh, part here of our on our balance sheet again, you have the contributed capital, and then you'd have various accounts. But that's just your common stock and your preferred stock, and again, credit debits and credits. So uh, debit and minus here on the left side, credit plus. Now remember. Uh, when you're dealing with this balance sheet here, you're going to have, moving back over here, you're going to have your assets equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. So essentially everything on the side of the equation here under your assets are going to have your debits are going to be increases, credits are going to be minuses, except for your contract accounts. But then when you move over to the, uh, on, this, on the other side of the balance sheet, your liabilities and stockholders' equity, everything here would be debit minus here versus credit plus here. So they just switch depending on what side of what they call the equation, your debits and your credits just reverse here. So all you have to do is remember here your assets, write them down here, credits are minus, debits plus, and then for liability, stockholders equity and all that, and even on your income statement, debit minus, credit plus. Okay, so we were into the contributed capital portion here. We had our common stock, preferred stock, break those out. Then you'd have something like additional paid in capital here. But then for our contra account here for this contributed capital here, that would be treasury stock. That would just understand that that works in an opposite direction of your common stock and your preferred stock. So here the contra is that the debit here, uh, you increase your treasury stock here, debit amount here would increase it and that would be a reduction to your uh, other contributed capital where you had a debit minus and same with your credits here credit uh, plus or minus here uh, is is a reduction here to your other contributed capital where credit plus was and then moving over to the earned capital that would be retained earnings here that's a special account here again debit minus credit plus and then dividends uh, that is really the contra account here. That reduces our earned capital, our retained earnings here. So you were looking here, remember the debit minus here for retained earnings, credit plus. Now dividends, uh, debit plus, credit minus. So the dividends here, if we increase the dividends over here, it would be a direct reduction to retain earnings. So that would reduce our retained earnings. So rather than go in and just debit minusing our retained earnings, we, if we identify them as dividends here, we'd put the we debit or increase our dividends here, which reduces our retained earnings. And then one other account, they just have, you can have any numerous other accounts, but I'm just putting additional other comprehensive income that works in the same direction here as our normal accounts here and our retained earnings for debit minus, credit plus. Now let's move over here to the income side of the equation. That would be our net income here. And here's a case where you're going to have revenues, less expenses. So revenues here, that's the same as our our other accounts here on our in our liabilities and stockholders hot stockholders there. Debit minus here on the left side, a credit plus to increase them. But now this is where we get into our contra account is would be expenses and cost of goods sold and that in other uh, contra uh, other expense items. So here under expenses, you have a debit, debit plus, a credit minus, working just the opposite direction here of our revenues, where we had uh, revenues were, uh, were decreased here by debiting it here, whereas expenses here are increased by debiting here. And so you would essentially, you're netting your expenses against your revenues here. So expenses are reducing your revenues to get to your net income. And then I'm also showing they break it out here, expenses, and then you'd have cost of goods sold acts as expenses. Okay, so just going back here, maybe we can zoom in one or zoom out here and just look at this template one more time here. So we're gonna have our balance sheet accounts over here on the left side. Those are assets, our liabilities, stockholders equity. And then over on the right side, we're gonna have what they call the income statement, net income here and showing here, uh, showing here on the right hand side. So our income statement here is separated from our balance sheet. And that's because we have to keep track of our income for the year here. And what happens with this income or the net income, it actually gets transferred over into, onto our balance sheet here into earned capital, 
or retain earnings. So if we have an increase in income for the year here, we'd credit or increase our retained earnings. If we had a decrease in income here for the year, or uh, we would debit or reduce our retained earnings or our, our earned capital. Okay, so uh, then again, just f again for our reference here, assets over here, live on the far left side here, and then our assets would be have to balance with our liabilities over here. Then we have our contributed capital here, and then our earned capital here. And then we did go over that income statement here. That would be separated out. Okay, and then finally, one other thing to talk about here. So when we're dealing with these debits and credits, when you're dealing with an accounting problem, you generally don't have more than three different accounts or four different accounts that you're dealing with at any one time here. So what you want to do is you want to go down here and we'll look at it. You set up these T accounts and there you have to identify what account you're dealing with here whether it's an asset liability or some stockholders equity then you have to just say as a reference determine if it's on your balance sheet or if it's on your income statement and then you have adjustments here you have to know when you have decreases in that particular account you you have to look at if if it's a debit decrease or if the debit decreases it or on the right uh, far left hand side here or if a credit decreases it on the right hand side of your T account and then uh, just this is why you need that template as a reference point here because you can get all tangled up here between the different accounts whether it's on the balance sheet it's on the income statement and that is the big challenge here so go back to your template figure out what account you're dealing with figure out if a debit or credit is increasing or decreasing see what account is being affected by the other particular account and then you have to again determine if your debit uh, credits listed any decreases or increases they have to balance between various accounts here and not to get in into all of that here but the idea is here lay it out in t account form come up with uh, your various accounts here to determine take it off your template to determine if it's a debit or credit and then you make your adjustments and you balance everything out so rather than trying to do it in your head or just on a piece of paper it's easier to lay it out in this t account form and look at the flows for your debits and credits and really that's what you're going to need here because you will get confused by either trying to attempt to do the problems it's difficult enough or trying to leave, uh, listen to a lecture or presentation where they're talking about the debits credits the various accounts balance sheet income statement assets liability stockholders equity net income investing financing operating it all becomes very confusing but if you lay it out in some systematic form much like you would be doing a problem in algebra you look at the different relationships really there's the relationships you have between accounts are either increasing or decreasing it sounds very basic um, to go through but when you're actually trying to apply or uh, do a problem uh, it can be confusing so that's why you want to go through your set up your template and refer to that when you're doing your problems so that's that will summarize our topic